Hey everybody, it's me, Rob Nichols, your Boston-based real estate entrepreneur, and I'm here at the Fiesta House in Roxbury on this snowy day. We had a blizzard yesterday, middle of March. It's crazy what's going on in Boston right now, so that's why you see the snow boots here. But we're still getting it in, not letting the weather stop us from doing what we have to do to get this property ready for an open house this coming Sunday. So electricians are doing some work today, the plumbers are coming tomorrow, HVAC, and we have a few finishing touches that need to get wrapped up. It's crunch time, so all hands on deck, and I will have this wrapped up. So let's take a look and check out what kind of work we're doing here at the Fiesta House. And first and foremost, just to remind folks, why do we call it the Fiesta House? Because people always ask, when we bought this house, there's a room off the back, a sunroom and closed porch. It's heated now and insulated. It wasn't at the time when we bought it. We had birds living in there and everything else, but we called it the Fiesta House because they had Mexican sombreros hanging up everywhere. They had um, green, lime green walls. If you look at the before photos in the first video I did here, you'll see that. Um, they had red ceiling tiles in there as well. So it's pretty, pretty funky design. And so we felt the Fiesta House was a fitting name for a property that was so festive at the time. Ready for a party. So come on into the living room area. First thing you notice, we reinstalled brand new floors throughout the entire house. So we actually didn't go over floors, we installed new floors here. Um, and these are stained with um, two shades of walnut mixed to really create a custom blend. And so uh, my wife, I give her all the credit for the design. Got to give her the, the, the credit on that. Um, that was her, her choice. Um, we tried to maintain all of the original baseboard and moldings as well. Um, as you can see, it was a lot of original character and detail in this house. Um, so we kept all the original window casings. Um, we kept most of the door casings as well that we could. Um, some of them were too far beyond repair, so we tried to replace them as we, you know, in, in certain spots, uh, which is kind of tough to notice. We tried to get something that blends in with, with what's here, so you really may not notice uh, it in, unless you look really closely. And then we added crown moldings at the top, right around the perimeter of the room to really add some more character to the space. We chose a nice beige color. Again, it's a more traditional house, so we chose traditional colors. And then we added the recess trims, LED lights, highly efficient and um, provide a ton of natural light uh, with, with the six windows coming in here as well. So it's a really nice house. And as you can see here, we put a, an electric insert into the fireplace. There was no fireplace. There was a fireplace here before it was non working It was just a heating vent. And uh, we wanted to make it functional. Uh, so we put in new heating systems. And outside of that, added this electric insert to really complete the nice feel. And again, we left all the original character um, and woodwork that was here uh, and just painted it white to make it uniform and, and nice. So that's the living room area. You got your entryway foyer area. Um, one thing to note here, initially we had a wall that came up probably right around this high. It's a straight wall, boom, and a post going all the way to the ceiling, wood, ugly wood post. So my wife decided, she's like, we gotta take that down. We took the wall down and st installed a new banister and, and railing there and balusters as well. And again, to really kind of match the, the charm here, we still have to stain it. The shade's not quite, quite exact to what we want it to be to match. Um, the original stained balusters and ball tops and uh, railings over there, but we'll get that done. And then come on over here. This house has two fireplaces. We're in the formal dining area. You'll see all of the light fixtures, or architectural, or excuse me, um, oil rub bronze, um, light fixtures, hardware in the kitchen, doorknobs and handles. Again, a house with this type of feel, you really want to accent it with nice details such as oil rub bronze character, so that dark contrast makes it, you know, really completes the house. It makes it feel like a home, makes it feel warm. Second fireplace, currently non-working, does connect to a chimney, so if you line it, it can work. We still have to repoint the interior, still some finishing touches to do here, and we're gonna paint it black. But again, you can kind of take a look at the fireplace and see we tried to maintain as much as the original, all of the original woodwork here as well, and then added a nice accent tile around the perimeter of it, both in the living room and dining area as well. Let's head to the kitchen. So this kitchen was dark and gloomy. We added this paneled door over here. You got a glass panel door off to the side. That really brought in a lot of natural light off the sunroom, which is now really an enclosed porch. You can use it all four seasons. It does have heat. We do have electric heat out there as well. And so um, we obviously redid everything. This kitchen was gutted to the studs. New tile floor, new walls, new ceiling, new lighting, the whole nine. If you see this blue box right here on the floor, we are gonna add an island. It won't be here in time for the open house, but it really completes the fill here. We're also gonna be adding some pendant lights above. So, um, you know, again, really wanna make this house in line with the standards for today's buyers. We didn't know if we'd have enough space, but after we finished it, we felt like, you know what? 
with all this space here, throwing an island in there really is gonna add a nice feel to the kitchen. Um, you know, white cabinet tree, uh, these are the panel, raised panel, yep, raised panel cam cabinet tree as well, and more oil, more bronze hardware. Stainless steel fridge, one thing to note about the fridge is counter depth. Again, and all this stuff I'm sharing, guys, this is like really a big part of the design when you do flips. Doesn't get a lot of attention when you, know, you watch HGTV or you're watching a lot of flippers. They just want to come in, make money, and get in, get out. But you have to put a lot of thought, especially when you're trying to sell a house like this one. We're going to be asking for around 739 to 749 range. So you really want to have to put thought into what you do here. Um, so take a look around, you know, stainless steel appliances, white cabinetry, again, in line with the buyer's taste um, nowadays. And that's pretty much it for the kitchen. A crown molding in here as well. Oh, can't forget to mention huge pantry. I mean, as you guys can see, enough room for at least four or five folks in here with custom built shelving. Our guys installed this, built it from scratch to really make the space more functional. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for the kitchen. What's that? Sunroom. Oh yeah, let's hit the sunroom, there we go. So this was the Fiesta room, folks. Got some construction debris back here now, but we did a nice wood grain tile back here. You got a half bath off of the sunroom. We wanted to keep the half bath off the kitchen, but not with direct access to the kitchen, because buyers nowadays definitely do not like bathrooms connected to kitchens, for obvious reasons, as we all know. No one wants to be trying to enjoy your meal and someone opens up that bathroom door and there's a funk that you just can't handle. You know, while you're trying to eat or cook, it could just change your whole mindset. So we added this half bath off the sunroom. Very small space, but again, functional. And um, there is a deck out here off the uh, sunroom as well. There we go. Small deck as well for entertaining. That's, you know, folks who I think will really appreciate in the summer months. You want me to open that door up? Oh, no, that's cool. All right, cool, man. It sounds good. Yep. <laughs> cool. You can get the half bath too, and that's pretty much it. And the space speaks for itself. I think folks will really enjoy this space back here. A lot of natural light, obviously, and um, it's conditioned space, so nice and toasty in here. It feels warm in here, right? Exactly. So. All right. Get some magic going over here. I hope I can open it. Let's see here. It's not locked from the other side or anything. There we go. Oh. <laughs> the sunshine and all this, all this glory and the blue salt there. Yeah, again, with all this snow we have, it's not, it uh, doesn't feel like spring, but they say spring's around the corner, man. I hope they're not lying. Cool. <laughs> you ready? Tell me when you're ready. Are uh, they ready? I hope so. And all this glory. So, as I said, guys, we got this deck here. Really gonna be great in the summertime. Doesn't look like it right now when you see that blue salt out there and that snow. They say spring's around the corner, but I don't know if I believe them. I hope it gets here soon. Can't wait for someone to be enjoying that in the summertime. Alrighty, so let's head upstairs to the second floor. We have three bedrooms and one bath on floor two. And a laundry room. Can't forget about that, because it's super convenient for a lot of these buyers nowadays. As home buyers, I see it time and time again, a lot of folks do not want to go down to the basement to do their laundry. And so from that perspective, I think that um, we put a lot of thought into all of our flips to make sure if we can, we add the laundry on a living level as opposed to the basement level. And so this floor, it's a perfect space for it. This bedroom over here had two closets. Now it's a huge bedroom, it has a huge closet on the other side. You don't really need to have another closet for this room, especially because we got a huge master suite upstairs. So got a laundry closet on the second floor. So from the bedrooms to the laundry, from upstairs bedroom to the laundry, super convenient. Let's check out this bedroom right here. Largest bedroom on floor two. And one thing you notice about this house, all of the closets are very, very good sized. Um, you can take a look, you'll see here, every bedroom, even though the bedrooms, this bedroom is rather large, it could be considered a master in a lot of locations, but we got the whole third floor for the master suite up there. 
And um, yeah, no, that's definitely one of the features about this house. Even though it was built in the early 1900s, it definitely had larger closets. So it's not typical for the time, because usually these old houses, man, you got like half a closet for these bedrooms. But it's definitely something about this house that the new owners will definitely appreciate. We can go check out the bathroom on this living level. So you can check out the full bath here, standing shower area, cream tile. You have a nice accent soap box in the back with a hexagonal tile pattern, mosaic hexagon tiles there. Again, just to add some a little bit more character and detail there. Again, that's my wife's design, not mine. I just co-sign like, yeah, I love it. I'm, I just say yes, honey, it's beautiful. We got a full size vanity and then we also have a linen, some linen shelves here, a little linen closet in the bathroom. We can store cleaning supplies and towels and anything else you need to store. We will be adding a mirror. We will be installing the vanity light. As I said, finishing touches aren't done, but all that will be done this week before the Sunday's open house. So now we can head up to the master suite. And fittingly, you'll see it has master bedroom space, walk-in closet space, and a master bath. Alrighty. So, let me get this stuff out of the way here. These guys were finishing up some work, some caulking. They got the carpet pad there so they can uh, save the knees. We gotta save the knees, folks, in construction. A lot of people don't think about those things, but little stuff like this helps take that pressure off and reduces the pain so you can enjoy your work as opposed to going home crying on that drive. So, bedroom space over here, this is how we envisioned it. You got an additional storage closet on this side, you know, seasonal storage or whatever you want to store back there. It goes a the whole length of that side of the house. In addition to that, you can get a shot of that corner over there. One thing to note up here, tons of natural light. Let's see if I can get this uh, box out of the way here. There we go. Tons of natural light up here. So you have dormered windows, you have skylights, and so that really creates a feel up here, even though it may be like an attic space, it's now a, a space where, you know, it feels a lot larger and a lot more open because of all this sunlight coming in here. And it's pretty much always like this, which is great because you got sun coming pretty much from every direction. We even got a skylight in the master closet. You can go check that out. We had them build custom shelves in there. We have a pole going in and we can really customize the space as the new owner sees fit. Um, as you'll see, you know, as we progress through the process and the buyers come through and decide what they want to do. And then we have the master bathroom, double vanity. This is an essential. If you have the space for it, you better leverage it. We got a huge stand up shower. Again, we have the same hexagonal pattern there. It's a different tile for the wall tile, a nice cream colored tile, textured as well. Um, and then you have the hexagonal accent piece in the soap, the soap box, as well as on the, the floor, shower floor. One other thing to note up here, even though we have a huge window in this bathroom, we definitely made sure it was obscured glass. We didn't really want to think folks wanted to be exhibitionists up here, exposing themselves to the world. And so obviously those are the kind of things you have to think about when you're doing a flip. It's not just, we got a window hole to throw a window in. You got to think that next step ahead. And I really say this for all the folks, like I said, who are thinking about getting into flipping. You got to understand those little details and thinking things through are so important because at the end, you don't, the last thing you want to do is put this thing on the market and then all this stuff comes up and then now it, it kind of delays the process of you making your money, your carrying costs go up. Nobody wants that. So you really want to plan it out, execute your process and move on to the next one. And that's pretty much it guys. This house will be listed, like I said, 739, 749, four beds, two and a half baths, three living levels, nearly 2,500 square feet and a whole lot of house to love. Stay tuned for more as our real estate journey continues and have a fantastic day.